<clears throat> the topic for today is multiple pregnancy. Multiple pregnancy, as the name suggests, is when a lady carries more than one fetuses inside her womb. It may be twins, triplets, quadruplets, or other higher order multiples. The commonest are twins. The learning objectives for today's lecture are that at the end of this lecture, you should be able to classify multiple pregnancy, enumerate and explain the risk factors for multiple pregnancy. You should be able to explain why are these risk factors risk factors for multiple pregnancies. You should be able to realize the complications associated with multiple pregnancy. I would also be giving you a brief overview about how these complications arise and how are you going to manage these complications. You should be also able to understand the general principles of management of women with multiple pregnancies regarding their antenatal period, their intrapartum uh, management, and their postpartum management. Coming to the epidemiology of twins and other multiple pregnancies. 3% of all live births are as a result of multiple pregnancies. The incidence is lowest in Japan, 6 per 1,000 births, and highest in Nigeria, 40 per 1,000 births. And majority of these multiple pregnancies are twins. 97 to 99% of multiple pregnancies are twins. The risk factors for multiple gestation, multiple pregnancy is advancing maternal age, familial predisposition, so traits run in the family. Like I'll give you my own example. My grandmother had twins, my maternal aunt had twins, my first cousin had twins, and I also have twins. So they run in the families. And they say that there is an autosomal, autosomal dominant pattern to it. Certain ethnicities, as we already discussed, like Nigerians have a higher incidence of twins. Artificial reproductive techniques Artificial reproductive techniques are techniques used for treatment of subfertility. And two of the commonest artificial reproductive techniques that are used in the treatment of subfertility are ovulation induction treatments and in vitro fertilization techniques. What happens in ovulation induction technique is that the maternal ovaries are stimulated to produce more than one ova at a time. So when more than one OA are released, the incidence of twinning is automatically twinning or even triplet pregnancy and higher order multiples are automatically increased. And this is very common in our setup. Aapke uh, paas patient aayegi. First, after treatment of subfertility, usne conceive kiya hoga and she would be carrying uh, multiple pregnancy, she would be carrying twins or triplets. Okay. Then comes the IVF techniques. IVF technique is in vitro fertilization. As the name suggests, fertilization takes place outside the women's body, inside a laboratory. Sperm from the male and ova from the female are fertilized and this fertilized embryo is then implanted into the female womb. 
mostly they implant more than one embryos to increase the chances of conception and if um, if all the embryos implanted uh, uh, all the embryos uh, transferred uh, success are successfully implanted then there are chance then there are chances of multiple pregnancy picture is that of an american citizen nadia suleiman she gave birth to eight babies at a time famously she is known as octomom if all the babies were born by ivf technique you can see all the embryos that were transferred into her womb became implanted now there are many regulations uh, many countries have their own regulations on ivf techniques they don't do not allow transfer of more than two embryos at a time okay, so the classification of twins may be based on number of the uh, classification of multiple pregnancy may be based on the number whether it is twins triplets quadruplets quintuplets or other higher order multiples classification of twins is also based on zygosity what do you mean by zygosity zygosity means the number of fertilized eggs number of zygotes formed initially so the mono in monozygous twins there is one zygote form which then splits to form twins monozygous twins are occur third in 30% of cases in 70% of cases they are dizygotic twins with two sperms fertilizing two eggs monozygotic twins have same genetic makeup they are known as identical twins famously they will have same gender and and same genetic makeup while in dizygotic twins the gender may be same or may be different uh, the different gender twins are always dizygotic because they have different genetic makeup right this was based on the this classification was based on zygosity that is the number of the eggs fertilized by the sperm classification is also based on chorionicity that is the number of placenta monochorionic twins occur in 20% of cases while dichorionic twins occur in 80% of cases you can see in the figure a dizygous pregnancy is always dichorionic see dichorionic and diamniotic while in monozygous pregnancy if the splitting of the embryo occurs within the first 3 days then the development is the same as that of the dizygous pregnancies there will be dichorionic and diamniotic twins so the monozygous pregnancies can result in dichorionic twinning when the splitting of the embryo occurs between day 3 to day 8 then what happens is monochorionic they will have a same placental mass single placenta monochorionic but again the amniotic cavities are separate so these are monochorionic and diamniotic one amnion second amnion diamniotic and monochorionic one placenta if the splitting occurs splitting of this monozygous uh, twins occurs after day 9 what happens monochorionic and now monoamniotic twins 1% of monochorionic twins are monoamniotic as well right so they are rare and conjoined twins are very rare 
Conjoined twins occurs when the split occurs after 12, 12 days. They may be, may be craniopagus with their heads joined together, thoracopagus with their um, thorax joined together, right? Different types of conjoined twins. When combined with amniocity, you say that these are dichorionic, diamniotic twins, monochorionic and diamniotic twins, monochorionic and monoamniotic twins. Okay. So I hope now you understand the classification based on zygosity. That is their number of the ova fertilized by the sperms and based on chorionicity, that is the number of placental masses formed. Diazygous are always dichorionic. Their placenta may fuse, but their placentas are separate. But there are two separate placental masses. In monozygous twins, dichorionic development can occur, while monochorionic development can also occur. Although it is less as compared to this, the monochorionic twinning occurs in 20% of cases. The dichorionic twinning occurs in 80% of cases. Ultrasound determination of chorionicity. Chorionicity is very important to determine because monochorionic twins are at higher risk of complications. And uh, it also, uh, the parents are usually interesting, uh, interested in finding out whether their twins are monochorionic or not. Um, and also it helps in counseling of the parents about the risks involved, right? So how do you determine the chorionicity? The chorionicity is determined by the number of constituent layers of the dividing membrane. This is the dividing membrane. If they, the constituent layers are more in the dichorionic twins, while there is a single constituent layer comprising of amnion in monochorionic twins, right? Qualitative interpretation of the membrane as thick or thin. Um, in dichorionic, the membrane is thick, while in monochorionic, there is only amniotic layer. So the membrane is thin. The demonstration of a tongue of placental tissue within the base of intertwin membrane, also known as twin peak sign. See, this is one placental mass, this is the second placental mass. This is one twin, this is the second twin. And this is the dividing membrane between the two twins. You can see the dividing membrane is thick. And there is also a, a tongue of placental tissue between the two, between the divide, dividing membrane. This is known as twin peak sign or lambda sign see it is just like a lambda. So this shows that the pregnancy is dichorionic. Okay, lambda sign, twin peak sign and lambda sign, dichorionic twins, right? And you can also determine the chorionicity by the number of placental masses. If there is one placenta anteriorly and other placenta posteriorly, then you can safely say that the pregnancy is dichorionic. Okay, this is the example of monochorionic twins. See, here is a thin dividing membrane, right? This is known as the T sign. There is no uh, extension of placental tissue into the dividing membrane, right? So this is a T sign. And chorionicity is best determined between 11 to 14 weeks, right? 
psychosity determination not routinely done uh, but um, monochorionic twins are monozygous discordant sex twins are dizygous right when the twins have different gender they are dizygous when the twins are monochorionic they are monozygous for the remaining the only way to determine whether they are monozygous or dizygous is by dna studies and if the parents are interested it can be offered at birth with hot blood psychosity studies psychosity determination may be helpful in cases of like for transplant compatibility or determining genetic risks now coming to the risks involved in multiple pregnancies the risks can be divided into maternal risks and fetal risks the maternal risks are miscarriage miscarriage rate is always higher in twin pregnancies it is estimated that almost all gestations Uh, that as not almost all almost 12% of the gestations start as twin pregnancies but uh, most of the twins vanish before they are detectable by ultrasound the so called vanishing twin phenomena hyperemesis gravidarum because there are two uh, placental masses and increased beta hcg production so the patient may have uh, excessive nausea and vomiting of pregnancy known as hyperemesis gravidarum in fact whenever a patient presents to you with hyperemesis gravidarum it is mandatory to uh, scan uh, her for multiple pregnancy to rule out multiple pregnancy premature labor premature labor can be either spontaneous due to over distension of the uterus or it can be iatrogenic iatrogenic means induced by the obstetrician why the obstetrician induces preterm labor in twins when complications arise in twins then you have to induce the labor so the Uh, risk for preterm birth is increased anemia there is increased risk of maternal anemia because uh, the maternal reserves are used at a faster pace in development of two or more fetuses incidence of preeclampsia and other hypertensive disorders in, is increased in the mother there is increased risk of antepartum hemorrhage postpartum hemorrhage again due to anemia and uh, large placental surface the risk of operative delivery is increased c section and interventions during uh, delivery of the second twin postnatal depression is increased and there are problems with breastfeeding coming to the fetal risks there is increased perinatal mortality preterm birth fetal growth restriction congenital anomalies are increased in fetuses one likely mechanism is that there is a uh, constraints of the uterine cavity which can lead into fetal tachycardias or congenital dislocation of the hip joint <clears throat> also congenital anomalies are very common in monochorionic twins due to the abnormal anastomo vascular anastomosis between the placental masses the cord accident are common uh due to malpositions and malpresentations in twins the malpositions and malpresentations are very common uh the twins may be breech they may be cephalic may be cephalic but mostly they are 
or longitudinal are oblique are they will have oblique lies and longitudinal uh, transverse lies and breach presentations so in all these mal presentations and mal positions the risk of cord accidents increase intra uterine death of single twin can occur which which has its own sequelae for the surviving twin is risk of twin twin transfusion syndrome which we will discuss in detail later and twin reverse arterial perfusion sequence while in mono amniotic twins there is a risk of cord entanglement right coming to each uh, risk individually perinatal mortality is higher than in singletons major cause is preterm birth and fetal growth restriction the major cause of perinatal mortality is that preterm birth and fetal growth restriction of twins 25% of twins vanish in early pregnancy as i talked earlier after first trimester death of single twin has adverse sequelae for mother and surviving twin what are these sequelae intrauterine demise of single twin can cause maternal risk of there is maternal risk of disseminated intravascular coagulation due to the release of vasoactive substances into the circulation there is a risk of spontaneous onset of preterm labor in diachorionic twins with increased fetal maternal surveillance pregnancy can be taken to term while in monochorionic twins death of one twin results in immediate complications to the other these include there are acute hypotensive hypotensive episodes and hemodynamic shifts from life to the dead twin through shared placenta and also release of vasoactive substances in the circulation of the surviving twin so these two mechanisms will cause neurodevelopmental handicap and death of the surviving monochorionic twin right in diachorionic twin this neurodevelopmental handicap and death may occur but in lesser cases right so diachorionic twin pregnancy may be carried to term with increased surveillance of the pregnancy maternal surveillance in form of checking for her uh bleeding and clotting profiles and fetal surveillance by serial growth scans risk of fetal growth restriction is always higher than in singletons if a growth discordance of 25% between the two twins is picked then it needs a referral to fetal medicine unit management is challenging as balancing the potential benefits of early delivery of one twin is difficult against the risk to the other aim is to take pregnancy as near to term as possible timing of delivery is especially challenging if one of the monochorionic twins is growth restricted right it is better to deliver after 28 weeks of pregnancy if one of the monochorionic twin is has growth restriction because sudden demise of this growth restricted fetus can result in demise of the other healthy twin as well as we already discussed but the hydrogenic birth in this case should always be covered with antenatal corticosteroids for lung maturity of the twins twin twin transfusion syndrome is a complication unique to monochorionic twins this is a 
picture of the twin twin transfusion syndrome. They're the recipient twin, the donor twin, donor twin and recipient twin, donor and recipient twin. What happens with the donor? The donor has <coughs> both restriction <coughs> and oligohydramnias. So this occurs in monopolionic twins. It involves development of abnormal, unbalanced vascular anastomosis between the circulations of the two twins, leading to chronic shunting of blood from donor to recipient twins. It complicates 15% of monopolionic twin pregnancies. Vascular connections that usually exist in monopolionic twins are either arteriovenous, venoarterial, arterio arterial or venovenous. The twin twin transfusion syndrome usually occurs due to large, unbalanced arteriovenous unidirectional flow. Arterio arterial connections have bidirectional flow and they are protective against twin twin transfusions. Scanning monochorionic twins fortnightly starting from 16 weeks of gestation is recommended to pick this complication till 24 weeks of gestation. After 24 weeks, this can arise, but it is rare. See, this is the recipient twin. This is the donor twin. Polyhydramnias in the donor twin. Oligohydramnia, sorry, in the recipient twin. Oligohydramnias in the donor twin. Diagnostic criteria are, there should be a single placental mass, meaning that the pregnancy is monochorionic. The, both the twins should have same gender. There should be a legohydramnias in one twin and polyhydramnias in the other. There will be discordant bladder appearance. The bladder of the donor twin may not be visible. And there is hemodynamic and cardiac compromise, right? Staging system for twin twin transfusion syndrome. In stage one, there is polyhydramnias and oligohydramnias with donor bladder still visible, right? Polyhydramnias in the recipient twin with the maximum vertical pool depth more than 8 cm, oligohydramnias in the donor twin with the multi, uh, maximum vertical pool uh, of the liker less than 2 cm, but the donor bladder is still visible. In stage 2, the bladder of the donor becomes invisible. In stage 3, there is absent end diastolic flow in umbilical artery and reverse flow in ductus venosus or pulsatile umbilical venous flow in either twin. What happens with this twin is that there will be absent and diastolic flow. Right? Or there will be reverse and diastolic flow. inductus venosus or pulsatile umbilical venous flow in either twin. Stage 4 is hydrops in either twin. Hydrops is the development of high output cardiac failure which leads to accumulation of fluid in the abdominal and thoracic cavities. Stage 5 Demise of one or both twins occur. Treatment of twin twin transfusion syndrome needs a referral to a tertiary care fetal medicine unit, and the treatment is by fetoscopic laser ablation of inter twin communicating vessels prior to 26 weeks. About 26 weeks, you should consider uh, deliv delivering the twins. This fetoscopic laser ablation. 
twins, anemia, polycythemia, sequence is a rare chronic form of twin twin transfusion syndrome. In this polyhydramnia, oligohydramnia is not seen. It usually results from <coughs> small vessels unidirectional flow. And it causes hemoglobin difference uh, between the twins. One with one twin, twin anemic and the other polycythemic. There is placental and fetal thrombosis in the recipient twin because of polycythemia while the donor twin becomes anemic and uh, hydroxpitalis due to high output cardiac failure occurs in the donor twin. Twins reversed arterial perfusion sequence is a complication again that happens in monochorionic twins. 1% of cases, it is characterized by large arterio arterial anastomosis between umbilical cards. The pump twin supplies the perfuse twins. Arterial blood is deoxygenated, so the perfuse twin has significant anomalies because the body of the um, recipient twin is not receiving the much needed oxygen. Uh, necessity for the development of the vital organs. So there is only rudimentary heart and aorta development and other bodies, upper body structures in perfused twin. The pump twin is at risk of high output cardiac failure. Treatment is fetoscopic cord occlusion of perfused twin to improve the outcome for the pump twin. This is the perfused twin. This is the pump twin. There is arterio arterial anastomosis resulting in the rudimentary development of upper body structures of the recipient. Cord occlusion of this twin may increase the uh, survival of the donor twin. Coming to the care of twins in antenatal period. During first trimester, folic acid supplementation uh, should be advised. There should be screening for anemia because um, mothers who carry multiple pregnancies are at increased risk of developing anemia. Ultrasound scan between 11 to 14 weeks is carried out to determine the fetal viability, the number of fetuses, the chorionicity, as we already discussed. The gestational age is determined and it is also used, the first trimester ultrasound scan is also used for Down syndrome scanning by measuring the knuckle translucency. Careful fetal mapping is also done in the first trimester. For example, if there are triplets, you write down that the triplet 2 is, right, is present in the maternal upper abdomen on the right side our maternal upper abdomen on the left side. Uh, this is useful for the future correlation. What else you do in the first trimester? Prenatal screening. The dry chorionic Down syndrome risk is calculated for each pregnancy. While for monochorionic twins, because they are monozygous by definition, uh, they have the same uh, risk. So the pregnancy, uh, the risk for Down syndrome is calculated as a whole. Both CVS and amniocentesis, if needed, can be done in twins. But in diachorionic twins, you need to sample both the twins separately. Antenatal care in the second trimester is by, with routine supplementation of iron, to all pregnant mothers with multiple pregnancy. And anomaly scan is done between 18 to 22 weeks. Anomalies are common in monochorionic twins, but generally one is affected more. One of the twin is affected more. Decision about feticide of anomalous twin needs to be balanced against complications of the procedure to the normal twin. And fortnightly visits for monochorionic twins are recommended. While for diachorionic twins, the mother is advised to uh, 
to visit four weekly. This is a general recommendation. The surveillance may be increased if need arises. Surveillance is for fetal growth restriction and complications of monoclonalitis. Referral to fetal medicine unit if above complications are found. In third trimester, fetal maternal surveillance is increased. Fetal complications are looked for and in mother, anemia and hypertensive disorders. Mother is screened for anemia and hypertensive disorders on each visit. Some advocate inpatient management of monochorionic and monoamniotic twins from 28 weeks. Because of the risk of cord entanglement, there is risk of sudden fetal death in monoamniotic twins. Timing of delivery varies from patient to patient, but generally, if there are no complications, then diachorionic, diamniotic twins need to be delivered by 37 weeks and the pregnancy should not be carried beyond 38 weeks. While the monochorionic diamniotic twins uh, should be delivered by 36 weeks after uh, uh, antenatal corticosteroids are given. Monochorionic monoamniotic twins need to be delivered between 32 to 34 weeks. The mode of uh, delivery decision is also taken in the ter third trimester. The mode of delivery for the monoamniotic twins is by elective cesarean section. For the monochorionic twins with complications, it is again by elective cesarean section. For higher order multiples, the uh, best way of delivering is uh, cesarean section. Uh, while for the dichorionic twins and uncomplicated monochorionic twins, uh, other obstructive uh, factors are taken into account. Uh, their position uh, and presentation is also taken into account. Intrapartum care of um, twin pregnancy is by continuous electronic fetal heart rate monitoring. Continuous electronic fetal heart rate monitoring karte hai with CTG, cardio topograms. There are two neonatal resuscitation trolleys should be available. Obstetricians, two obstetricians and two pediatricians ideally. Uh, the NICU and anesthetist should be informed. NICU is the neonatal intensive care unit. And anesthetist is informed in case uh, need for emergency cesarean section arises. Epidural analgesia is preferred because uh, the delivery of the second twin usually requires um, internal manures. So it is better that epidural analgesia, if available, is in place. Oxytocin is used for augmentation and there should be active management of third stage of labor. You should anticipate, sorry, this is not anemia. You should anticipate postpartum hemorrhage in twins because of a larger placental surface, larger uterus, and usually there is um, anemia in such patients, so they are at higher risk of postpartum hemorrhage. So active management of third stage of labor decreases the postpartum hemorrhage. What you do in active management that you give syntocinone prophylactically. The risk of emergency cesarean section is increased and the risk of intervention for the delivery of second twin is also increased. So these are some of the interventions that you do for the delivery of the second twin. One is breech extraction of the second twin. So the first fetus is cephalic, it is born. What you do now, you feel the uh, feet of the um, second twin, which is breech in presentation, and then you extract the baby. Right? This is breech extraction of the second twin. Internal podalic version of transverse second twin. If the second twin is transverse, what you do, you go inside the uterine cavity, you feel for the fetal feet, and then you grasp them and bring them down towards the entritus and then you rupture the membranes and deliver the second twin. 
it is difficult if the fetus has its back towards you, right? Postpartum care, postpartum care of the twins will be that you should help the mother and counsel her about breastfeeding. If there is uh, increased incidence of postpartum depression in mothers of twins, so you should be vigilant about that. And you should advise contraception to ladies who have delivered twins generally to all ladies and especially to uh, ladies who have de delivered twins. So that was all about the multiple pregnancy.